Hello everybody, welcome to today's episode. In this episode, we are talking about ChatGPT and the issues surrounding it. In the world of artificial intelligence, there's been one name that's been on everyone's lips lately. ChatGPT. 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 OpenAI, the San Francisco-based startup that created ChatGPT, opened the tool up for public testing in November 2022. In under a week, the AI model amassed over a million users, according to OpenAI's CEO. By the end of January, ChatGPT was averaging about 13 million visitors per day. Users have put the text-based AI chatbot through its paces, with prompts ranging from the silly to the practical and even the creative. Well, this was the entire euphoria surrounding ChatGPT two months back. Since the time it was released, it was expected to change the entire world. And now the situation has changed. Italy has become the first Western country to block chat GPT. The Italian Data Protection Authority said there were privacy concerns relating to the model, which was created by US startup OpenAI and is backed by Microsoft. Musk and hundreds of influential names, including Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, are calling for a pause in experiments, saying AI poses a dramatic risk to society unless there's proper oversight. Well, in this video, we are going to talk about what is ChatGPT in plain English? Number two, what are the issues surrounding ChatGPT? And number three, what are the takeaways for you and me? Please go ahead, click on that like button and do subscribe to the channel if you like this video. ChatGPT in plain English, its full form is nothing but chat generative predefined transformers. And to go further beyond and understand ChatGPT, let's first dig into transformers models. Transformers is an artificial intelligence model which was developed in 2017. If you think about it, around half a decade back. And the fundamental difference between transformers and the artificial intelligence models developed until that point in time, let's say one of the most sophisticated models, recurring neural networks is pretty straightforward. Recurring neural networks or all the sophisticated artificial intelligence models until that point in time were doing something called as sequential processing of information. For example, if you basically put in a sentence, I am about to get into a meeting and I'm going to deliver a if you type down this entire sentence, the next word is generated automatically even in your email. This generation of the next word is called as generative artificial intelligence. The models until 2017, these were developed based on sequential information processing. That is, the last word in this entire sentence was given the highest importance. And if you come back in that entire sentence, the relative importance of these words would go down. Which means if you were to read an entire paragraph, the first sentence would lose its relevance very soon. So recurring neural networks or any other sophisticated artificial intelligence method would not be able to summarize a book in a meaningful way or summarize even a paragraph in a meaningful way. And transformers, is the artificial intelligence model which came into existence to exactly tackle this problem. It started considering the whole sentence as a sequence, as an input to the next generative words. That is as easy as you can understand it. Instead of thinking about words, having more weightage to the words which are happening recently, transformers model would take the entire sentence and would not determine the weights based on where they are occurring in the sentence. For example, the same set of sentences. I am about to get into a meeting and deliver. The next word would not be determined on the last word itself. It takes the entire sentence into consideration. And that is the reason why ChatGPT, which is based on these transformer models, can summarize an entire book, can synthesize the entire article in an internet and give you what you should know in quick two or three sentences. That's the beauty about it. Now, if we look into the mechanics of how this entire chat GPT evolved, the entire training model is nothing but they took information from all around the web, Wikipedia pages, blogs, publications, scientific journals, then reviews, posts, name it, and they have taken these data points from all around the web to realize, to estimate what could be the next word or the next sentence or the next answer. That was straightforward, but this requires almost terabytes of data. There were terabytes of data processing 
to understand what can be the next generative answer. Subsequently, the answer is still not in a conversational style. To add that conversational ability, individual humans have started practicing or started taking up both the human role and also the chat GPT role and they developed tons of conversations which were then fed into the model so that the model can imitate these kind of conversations, imitation learning at its best. Once the model has taken all the information from the web, then it is also now able to transform and also have conversation based on this imitation learning. Finally, they went ahead and added the boundary conditions, the points which ChatGPT should not touch potentially. For example, if somebody were to ask, hey, what are the 10 ways in which I can commit suicide? ChatGPT would not answer. These are the kind of boundary conditions that they have kept from an ethical and moral perspective. Now you can see it is data guided by humans. So the power of this entire model is pretty obvious. This is what ChatGPT is in plain and simple English at a very, very high level. Please do tell me if you want me to go in detail and explain the technical concepts as well. I'll do that in one of the next videos. Now let's jump into what are the issues surrounding ChatGPT. The first issue is with respect to the bias that is present in the system itself. For example, all the data in the internet is represented by who is able to talk, write and express their opinions on the internet. There is a whole other world who are not able to express their views, probably they are not educated and they do not know how to even write, view or access the internet. And these views are completely marginalized from both internet and also the more advanced version of it, ChatGPT. Unfortunately, it is not just about the data present in the system, but it is also who is generating these models. For example, if you look at which university had the most impact on artificial intelligence as a field, it is Stanford and MIT's. A lot of new organizations, new tech companies come out from the creations of these individuals who attended these schools. And unfortunately, there was only one black student who graduated from Stanford as a PhD in artificial intelligence until 2017. So when I, when I was at Stanford by then, I heard that they had literally only graduated one black person with a PhD in computer science ever since the inception of the computer science department. And you can imagine the type of influence that this school has had on the world, right? You can imagine the kinds of companies that came out of there, including Google. Um, so I, that was just such a shock to me. So you can look at the amount of bias that would be in the system because the entire system is dominated by male white individuals. Subsequently, if you look at the Google research team, there were only six black individuals out of 8,500 people in 2016. Now, these biases go into the model and the model itself is biased, not because of the data, but also the people who are creating these models. One of the researchers at Google, when she talked about these things, she was fired. And subsequently, there was a lot of ruckus around it, but unfortunately, nothing happened ultimately. The second issue is about the recency of the data. Well, as we know, ChatGPT data is trained only until 2021. And for example, the organization that I started, Blue Chapter, came into existence in 2022. So there is no trace of Blue Chapter in ChatGPT. Subsequently, there are also a lot of other startups which shut their shop in 2022. They were involved in fraud cases as well. So if you are heavily reliant on ChatGPT, you might not even know that these are not functioning anymore and you might enroll in a course there. If there are land breaking events, that is even worse. Imagine Martin Luther King had come up with his speech in 2022 and ChatGPT, one of the most advanced artificial intelligence models out there, does not even know that Martin Luther King has delivered his speech in 2022. I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. That's the issue. Well, you might say, can't ChatGPT go ahead and train based on the latest data? It can. However, as we discussed initially, 
this model has a lot of human intelligence attached to it. So training on the latest events would require a lot of computational power and also cost. Now the third issue that I want to highlight in this aspect is that ChatGPT is not a social organization. The parent company OpenAI started as a non-profit organization. However, very soon and now it is a profitable organization. Such an advanced artificial intelligence model working behind the corporate and looking to maximize their profits is not a great sign for the entire humanity. Well, that is what Elon Musk has been saying over the last few months. We do not know if because he was moving out and if he's talking about these things as a kind of revenge, but ultimately there is a lot of truth in what he's saying right now. The fourth important thing that we also need to know with respect to the issues in the chat GPT world is that there is a lot of euphoria around it. If we rewind a few years, we know that when Alexa was launched, there was a similar euphoria. Hey, how can a small device learn what I am asking and perform an action accordingly? Unfortunately, the euphoria around Alexa has died down quickly. Now, even layoffs are happening within the Alexa unit of Amazon. The other alternate potential scenario for ChatGPT is to grow and thrive in specific use cases. For example, OpenAI itself along with ChatGPT has another product called Dolly. And Dolly is nothing but it generates images based on your text. So for example, if you go ahead and say, hey, I want a monkey sitting on a tree and that image shouldn't have been existing on the internet, it will probably curate something similar to what is out there, but not entirely the same. Now, the ability to generate visual graphics is very powerful and it can be used a lot in the PowerPoint setup. Well, I myself as a consultant, I used to use a lot of support from the visual graphics teams. And if ChatGPT or Dolly can replace their entire work, that is a specific use case. Whether it's a good thing or not is an entire conversation by itself, but you can see the use case is very powerful. Another example could be the Bloomberg GPT. Yes, that is trained on a specific data set and the data is reliable and you can go ahead and ask any set of questions. These use cases, specific use cases, in my personal opinion, can overcome the issues surrounding ChatGPT and also they'll add more value rather than a generic GPT itself. Now, what are some of the takeaways for you and me? Number one, Italy has banned ChatGPT and I believe this could be the very first nail in the coffin. Multiple other regulators will now be looking very closely at the data privacy laws. And I don't think Satya Nadella, Bill Gates or even the OpenAI team would consider this entire event as a negative step backwards because they will be actively looking into how regulations are even framed within this context. They will be involved in these discussions. And once these regulations start to come up much more clearly, then they'll tweak their business models accordingly. And it's important for them for this discussion to happen sooner rather than later when the business models are already pretty strong and they cannot change it anymore. So this probably is a welcome change for all of them that, hey, let's go and co-create the regulatory frameworks around artificial intelligence. Number two, we need to understand that ChatGPT, Alexa, any of these inventions in the artificial intelligence world are running behind corporate walls and they are looking for primary profits. That is their objective. It is not about societal benefit. So when we are consuming this information and when we are giving out information, we need to understand the issues around it. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoy this video and also I hope you got some value out of it. Please do go ahead, press on that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Take care. Bye-bye.